Oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> Come on now. You don't feel that big. Uh, just a little small mouth. Look at that. All right, come on, come on, come on. Barely got him hooked in the back. See that? Look at that. Barely got him hooked in the back of the bait. That's why you use that medium action rod, let him fight it out a little bit. Come on. Come on, I'm gonna swing in. Oh, not a bad little fish right there. That's what I'm talking about. You wanna not get those hooks in you. <laughs> Come on. What a way to start our morning. Look how, look at that little chunk go. Look at that, folks. Let me turn right here where you can see. Look at that little chunk. That's a little pregnant bass there. That's a little female right here at Sholo Lake. Beautiful smallmouth uh, bass on a jerk bait. You know, today, believe it or not, we are almost in May. April at Sholo Lake up where I live here in Sholo, Arizona. Love this area up here in the White Mountains. You know, when the bass fish in and everything starts going into its top water down below and on the lower lakes, the big lakes, you know, our water temperature here is only 54 degrees. So these bass are more of a, in a pre-spawn and uh, it makes it a lot of fun. I love to come up here and start fishing my lakes and having a little fun up here. Uh, Obviously there's fewer bass and the lakes are a lot smaller, but it's, there's still a lot of fun to be had here. What I'm throwing today is just a jerk bait and I love jerk baits for smallmouth. And uh, I'll tell you what, a uh, little lavender shad there going on. And I like it because it's white. We, our, our water's not clear here at Sholo. It's got a little uh, twinge dingy to it. Something white, something chartreuse like that will catch you a lot of fish. You can see those red hooks on here. And uh, you know, some of them have red, some of them don't. But I can tell you this, a lot of people think that they hit those red, those red hooks and they zero in on those a little bit better. I don't think it's hurting anything. Give it a little color, a little flash. And uh, the ticket to this bait though today, with the water temperature being so cold, is we gotta work it a little slower than you would say during the summer. And uh, so your, your retrieve speed's gonna be a little bit slower. And all we're doing basically is he kind of hit it on the pause. You'll throw it out there and I'll do a quick little twitch twitch. Let it sit there, twitch twitch. And what I'm gonna do is, you, you, sometimes you can almost let it sit there for, <clears throat> you know, as, as long as 15 or 20 seconds, you know, if you want. I'm gonna move it a little bit faster than that. But, uh, you gotta let the fish kinda tell you what they want. And uh, jerk baits are awesome for smallmouth. And uh, there's some big smallies in this lake. We had uh, one of our bass club members come out here. They had a little head to head competition. And uh, he ended up catching like 17 pounds of bass out here in five fish. And I'm like, holy cow, that's a lot. Of, that's, a, that's a good limit out here. But uh, beautiful smallmouth. And I'm hoping to catch a few big ones today. We'll see what we can't do. but. We're gonna start off, I have not been to this lake in over a year, and uh, so we're just gonna start off going around this lake, throw a little jerk bait, see if we can find a few fish, catch a few fish on it. It's a good, it's a good search lure, and you know smallmouth will love that. Now the ticket is, is like I said, that retrieve speed, and something else I'm doing too, is you know, I'm using a 10 pound test line on this jerk bait, and the reason for that, it's a fluorocarbon line, the reason for that is because I want the bait to act as natural as possible. But when I, when I pop it a couple times, I put slack in the line a little bit so that bait will actually twitch back and forth. Instead of just pulling it forward like this and digging it, I want the bait to act like it's dying or something like that or trying to run from the fish. And uh, it gives it a much more natural appeal. And right through here, we don't have a whole lot of wood in this lake to really deal with. You know what I'm saying? Um, so these, these, these fish are gonna be out in open water. There's one, there's one. I don't know how big he is. I'm just kind of easing him in here a little bit. You don't know until you start pulling him up. Oh, beautiful black smolly. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I got him hooked on that back hook. Oh, I got him on bolt. There it is. All right. Look at that, folks. <laughs> Come on. I got you. Making a lap around this lake. That's the one thing cool about these small lakes is you can make a quick lap around them and, and throw a bait for a while and see how they react to it. But look how beautiful that fish is. <laughs> They're footballs. I mean, just footballs. Beautiful smallmouth. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one thing about it, one thing I will say that I love about these little lakes is you can go around them and I usually take a lap around them to find out what the, where the fish are, what they're, what's going on, you know. You like to look at the different stuff. So you're really not out a whole lot of time to try like a flattier area or some rock area or some area with a little bit of wood in it, you, you know, because you're, you, but I will say this, when you come to the White Mountains, because of the horsepower rating, which I believe is, I think it's 10 horse or 9.9, .9, I've never really, you know, it used to be eight horse when I was a kid, but I can tell you this, I drop my, we, you know, the bass club, we all drop our big bass boats in. You just can't fire up your big motor. You can't use it at all. To pull it, to take it off your, your trailer and to put it back on, no. You gotta use your trolling motor. But the lake's small enough to where you got plenty of battery, you can make laps around the lake and, uh, you know, uh, have a lot of fun with it for sure. You know, something else that wouldn't hurt. I'm throwing a, I'm throwing more of a shaddy white type pattern uh, jerk bait today but the reason why is it's got that little thin line of chartreuse in it and uh, the other reason is because it's got the white belly and it's it's white you know and the reason why I like that is because we got a lot of trout we don't have shad in these lakes doesn't mean you can't catch them off shad type pattern lures but um, they'll more represent a trout something like that because we don't have like I said shad in this lake so you want something that more represents a trout, a bluegill, a crawdad. You know, when you're out here throwing crankbaits, throw something more of a frog, you know, like a, like a crawdad color or a frog color, a, a bluegill color or a trout color, something like that. And it'll help you a bunch in catching fish up here. And realizing too that because these fish do base themselves on, on, on uh, you know, crawdads, you know, eating crawdads and living off them a lot and stuff like that on these lakes. It, you, it, you're not going to find, you're not going to go through these lakes and find them busting like you would at Roosevelt or Lake Pleasant. It's a whole different fishery. Now, a bass is a bass no matter where we go. They still have to eat. They do what they have to do. But there's a difference in chasing the shad versus, you know, having, I call these home fish. You know, they kind of stick around in the area uh, that they like, like rocky points and things like that. That's why generally... You know, spot fishing on these lakes is pretty good because there's certain areas the fish like to hang out in, and that's just the way it is. They don't run and chase after the shad all the time. Now, they'll chase after, after trout and things like that, but you're not going to see them blowing up like that. Oh, there's one. There's one. <laughs> I don't know how big it is. Doesn't feel very big. I had to back out a little bit. Sometimes you gotta back out just a little bit to get these fish to, they're out there a little bit, especially smallmouth. That's a nice smallmouth. That's a nice smallmouth. I got him hooked pretty good on that front hook. Yeah. Not a giant, but still a nice one. All right, come on, buddy. You know, I slowed the retrieve down a little bit. I'm using the shade off this bank because they'll use it as cover for ambush, especially when there's not a whole lot here. And I'm finding some rocky areas. Come on, buddy. And come up with that little guy. But here's the deal. I backed out a little bit. You know, I was throwing to the bank, throwing to the bank, throwing to the bank. I'm still throwing to the bank, but I'm backing myself out a little bit farther, making a little bit longer cast. And the reason for that is I feel these fish might be suspended hanging off a little farther just before they move up with the water temperature the way it is. They're not up spawning yet. They're, you know, maybe during the midday because the lake's uh, low and it's also a, this is a little bit deeper lake than say Rainbow, but the water temperature will come up. They might get up there and cruise a little bit. But the thing is, is I, I just feel that they might be out a little bit farther, maybe on some points, but I gotta hit the rocky stuff. 
So what I'm gonna do is go down this bank, I'm gonna utilize this shade, I'm gonna keep my boat way out here, make long cast, slow my retrieve down a little bit, and uh, see if I can't get those fish out here that are a little bit more suspended just before they move up in there. You know, something also to think about when you're throwing reactions is it works the same way pretty much here in the White Mountains as it does anywhere else, is that you have a little bit of breeze on the water, it really does seem to help. So you wanna, you wanna, you know, when you're throwing these reactions, a spinner bait or something like this, it really does help to have, after the early morning, you know, to have a little bit of breeze. And a lot of times you can find it here on the main lake, unless there's just absolutely no wind. You can get out of the wind a little bit on this lake, not much. It's pretty much just an open bowl, but with the wind, with a little bit of breeze, it sure fires the, the fish up a lot of times, especially in the afternoon. So if you can get a little bit of breeze out here and don't mind a little bit of wind, you can catch them on these reaction baits. Oh, he hit it right there. It's just a little, little small mouth, but it is a smallie. Look at that, I barely got him. But, <laughs> Just kind of work him in, and that's why I use this light tip, this medium action rod here from Taipan. All right, come on, you're in. All right, we got you. Make sure we don't get any hooks in this. Come on. There we go. <laughs> got up on the rocks and uh, managed to get him. He's a, one of the littler ones, but yeah, he's still there. You know, just working the rock banks. You know, the wind started dying down on us a little bit. I was a little worried they weren't gonna bite on this too much, but I slowed it down. And what I started doing was moving just a little bit faster in this area, just to see if they grab it. There we go. There we go, right there. Not a giant, but these smallmouth are a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, I've talked a little bit about the lure and the line. I use 10 pound test fluorocarbon, but I think one of the things that's really important to remember is look at my rod. I'm using a medium action rod. When you're throwing, this is a seven foot medium action rod by Taipan Rods, and it's an awesome rod, but let me tell you something. The reason you wanna have something with a good tip like that is so when the fish is fighting, look at those little bitty tiny hooks, okay? When they bite them little bitty tiny hooks, oh, you know, sometimes they just barely got it hooked in them, especially when you're jerking it and they hit it on the jerk or something like that. You might just have them barely hooked. The, the tip will allow you to fight the fish all the way back and get it in the boat to where if you were using a real stiff rod, what'll end up happening is, uh, you know, when the fish surges, it'll just rip the hook right out of its mouth because there's nothing there for it to flex. You need something to flex. So a medium action rod is a must, I think, for this kind of fishing for me. And uh, it works really good. So that's pretty much what we're doing. And uh, you'd be amazed at how many fish you'll put in the boat with a medium action rod throwing a little jerk bait versus throwing a heavy action rod, you know? Because um, when they make that surge, especially if you get a real big one, that tip will, will help you. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing that's really important to remember about smallmouth is they like chartreuse. Whether you're throwing something like I threw today, a white uh, jerk bait, it still had a little chartreuse line in it. If you can find a jerk bait that's got a little bit of chartreuse in it, no matter what you buy, it seems like that seems to attract those smallies really good. So when you're going to buy something to, to jerk bait fish with, as far as a jerk bait goes, find something with a little chartreuse in it, and I'll guarantee it'll help you get more strikes on them smallmouth. I think I'm in though. Nope, oh, that's a fish. It's a fish. <laughs> it's a little fish. I don't know how well I got it hooked, but looks like another little small mouth. Yeah, there it is. Little small mouth. <laughs> They're starting to move up a little bit. I moved that one up pretty shallow. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah, look at there. Come on. All right, let's see what you got. All right, gotcha. 
Got him on that front red hook. I changed that back hook out because that, that one was dull. I missed that big fish on real quick and I was just like, oh. So I changed the back hook out and look, he hits the red one. Yeah. Always carry a good pair of pe needle nose pliers for these little guys. And when you go to put a grip on them, you can put a good grip on them, but yeah. That's, that's a tiny little female too. It's the little one. <laughs> So we've made a lap around the lake and we're back here at the docks where we started. Five fish, should have had six, but five on the, uh, on the jerk bait. And so you can make a quick lap around the lake. It took us about, oh, I wanna say about two, two and a half hours to do it. And uh, now you can start and go, okay, well, we, we threw the jerk bait around. You can keep going around and probably catch a fish or two more, or you can pick something else, try it out. I want to remind you of something that's really important about these lakes in the White Mountains. You know, I like to come up here and do a little bass fishing, and I've bass fished here my whole life. And, and we have trout, which if you enjoy just getting out of the heat, coming up, catching some trout, walleye, whatever you like to do, catch some bass, it's a lot of fun. But remember, you don't, you're not coming up here to bass fish to catch 20 fish a day, because you're, you're gonna be lucky to get your, you know, we don't have really anybody on the lake. In, uh, if it was highly pressured and you had more bass, bass fishermen on the lake, it'd be a little bit harder. But you know, you come out for five, five bites a day if you can get them, and that's awesome for these lakes. And I grew up that way. I remember going to Roosevelt Lake for my very first tournament and coming in, and I had, I, I think I had a 15 fish day or something, and I was like, man, what an awesome day, man. It was awesome. And hearing everybody else cry the blues about how slow the lake is, I'm like, really? You ought to come to the White Mountains where I came from. You're lucky to get five bites a day, man, you know? So it was big for me, but I think it made me become a better fisherman over the years too, you know? I'm used to the slower bites. It doesn't bother me as much. I need five bites, you know? So, but uh, you know, this little jerk bait does pretty good. Well, I'll tell you what, you can come out to Sholo Lake, catch a few of these smallmouth, maybe luck into a, a walleye or a trout or two for sure. Lots of trout in the lake, by the way. <laughs> and get out here and have some fun. This lake is wide open, and, and I'll tell you what, you can definitely, you don't have to worry about catching a ton of weeds a lot of times with, uh, if you're out here trout fishing, it's, it's, it's a beautiful lake and a beautiful area. But uh, it's about time to head to the picnic basket and get some breakfast or what we call brunch. And uh, so we're gonna head up there and, and get us something to eat. But I'll tell you what, grab some jerk baits, have some fun up here. When the wind's blowing a little bit like this, it's perfect. So it's beautiful out and uh, the White Mountains is really uh, starting to warm up a little bit. So uh, it's gonna get a lot of fun. Uh, the lakes are gonna fish good this year, I think. A little low, but they're gonna fish good. Thanks for joining us on the water. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>